a few seconds I'm trying to get my explore back up all right so welcome to it's a Tuesday night Bible study uh, if you're there on TikTok welcome uh, I'm still trying to get our audience on Facebook to join but Go get it here in a moment once my computer decides to act right. We're going to start tonight with a word of prayer from Brother Vaughn. He's going to lead us in a word of prayer, and then we're going to jump right into our Bible study. Uh, let me make sure my volume is up. Can everyone hear Brother Vaughn? Hola. All right. Go ahead, brother. All right. Um, Lord, just thank you for today. Thank you for um, just giving us the ability to breathe and have the opportunity to, um, you know, dive into your word, dive into you. Um, let us be people that, you know, enjoy this time, but take it serious. Yeah. Um, let us uh, let us just be people that enjoy time with you. Um Lord, I just thank you for your word. Thank you for the day. And uh, thank you for this moment. And let us let us hear what Holy Spirit needs us to hear. Yeah. Um, let, let Brother Ken be, uh, be your voice. And let his discernment be your discernment and not his own. Yes. And just uh, let us love this moment, man, because it's you. This is you right here. Um, we appreciate you being in our presence, and let us honor this moment. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. So, can you guys hear us on TikTok again? I apologize here about Facebook. It will come up here in a moment because I'm having a few computer issues. So, what we've done the last, I think this is week nine or ten. I'll go back and look here in a moment when I upload it. We've gone through the go, we've gone through uh, the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus took the time to explain the heart of what He gave Moses in in the commandments. And so the commandments are more than just following rules and pro policies and processes and laws. It was about connecting with the Father, having a relationship with mankind. It's two pieces that you can probably get out of the Ten Commandments. That you can also get out of uh, chapters 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew, which is love God and love people. And if you can do those two things, um, you probably can punch your ticket uh, to, to heaven. So we've already gone through chapter 5. Uh, you can go find that on YouTube. We call, we're calling this, this series of Bible studies Mountainside Moments. And so you can go find all the previous studies there. Uh, this week we're picking up with uh, the the Lord's Prayer, as many people call it, but we actually call it the Disciples' Prayer or our prayer because it's the prayer that Jesus taught us. We got through the first part of the prayer last week by discussing that, you know, who the kingdom is and who owns the kingdom and we're part of the kingdom and how we're children of the kingdom. We're royalty. We're, we're king's kids. We reign and rule with Christ. He's, he has authority. And so when we say, let your kingdom come, let your will be done as you've already done it in heaven, let it happen in these earthen vessels. We're, we're walking in the steps that a king or a queen should have because of who we belong to. Uh, this week, we're going to start right here in this in the parts where it says, give us this day our daily bread and please forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Now, I'd like to preface this by saying we're going to we may or may not get to it tonight, but we're going to move the forgiveness part to a latter discussion because there's another section right after that where he goes on to say, if you don't forgive, I can't forgive you. So we want to make that a part of the full discussion. But tonight, let's start with give us this day 
our daily bread. Now, before we go into this and I ask you guys some questions and now you guys know I got some good questions for you. Has anyone ever noticed that the prayer that that's being prayed by Christ is in the first person plural? For all of us that went to school and remember, you know, first person, second person, third person. Um, what is the significance you think of him saying our and us and not me and I? Has anyone ever noticed that? And have you ever taken thought to why he, he uses first person plural and not first person singular? Anybody? What are your thoughts? Uh, I'll, go, I'll go first. Uh, I think that it's just, first off, he's he's showing that he's um, he, he has man in him. Um, he's God and man. Uh-huh. And I also think that straight up, Jesus just wanted to connect with people. He wanted to connect with us so much that he, he brought himself down to our level. Because you're talking about the geniuses of genius. Hmm. And he uses parables. Yeah. Um, parables are for me. It's it's big stories dummied down for hmm. us. Um, that sounds bad. that sounds bad the way I said it, but I just think he wanted to connect with us. But that's that's just my opinion. Okay. Give me somebody else. Why, why did? Um, Go ahead. I, so, um. So I um I feel it in my heart. Like in my spirit, that look, uh, the Lord has always taught me. So I've known the King James Version since I was eight. I was able to just process it and, and as a growing, as a growth in my ways. And um, to me, our Father is is our our everything. Our who we seek when we turn our eyes up to the heavens, we know our Father is there. He's our Father because He's our Creator. He's our Alpha, our Omega, the beginning, the end. He is ours. Ours. He That's... is ours and we are His, like it says in the Word. Okay. Batting two for two. That's so good so far. What else? Anybody else have a thought or opinion on why it's plural and not singular? Because He's the Creator of all. Not just the one. Well included. Yeah. Yeah. My takeaway um, is that everything you guys said, I absolutely agree with. I don't disagree with any of it. I think also it shows that when we pray, we're never to pray selfishly, ever. Every time we pray, we're supposed to be praying for our community, our friends, our family, our body. You, your husband, your wife, your neighbors. When, when you pray, he said, our father. So every time we go into prayer, it's never a selfish prayer. And I know sometimes prayers can come off or can appear to be selfish. Lord, I need, Lord, bless me. But nowhere in the prayer that he taught us, did he ever use the, the first person singular? It was always first person plural our father give us this day so when i'm asking for bread that we're getting ready to get into tonight give us this day our daily bread give us i'm really praying as i'm praying for me a blessing for you because it's not just lord increase my territory as jabez once said but i'm really saying lord increase our territory so i thought that pretty significant. I don't know if anyone's ever picked up on it. I'm getting ready to get over to my TikTok comments uh, here in a moment. And so, um, and then I'm trying to also get back over to Facebook uh, because I had a few technical difficulties. So give us this day, our daily bread. I'm just going to open it up. What's that mean to you before I give you my commentary? We can go round table here with our friends uh, and family on uh, uh, the messenger. And then I'll read some comments on Facebook and TikTok. What's it mean to you when he says, give us this day our daily bread? Is it is it physical? Is it spiritual? I'm trying to try not to give away my commentary. Uh, is it is it uh, more metaphorical? What are your thoughts on daily bread? What is daily bread? Just give us what we need for that day. Every day, every day, your needs going to be different. So he's going to supply whatever your need is for that day. Okay. So, 
that's what I that's what how I could look at that. So so Gracie says whatever you need today, that's what you're 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 asking for. No spe no specifications, just whatever you think I need today, Lord, give it to me. Okay, what else? Somebody else give me give me a thought or a comment. Um um I I known uh, known it too as especially as I went through my recovery process it's, it's not just knowing um, him as a physical it's knowing him spiritually and knowing his words be able to thrive and hunger for it mm -hmm. and so we can live by it and abide by it okay I like that Hun hungering hungering for his word what else what are some other thoughts on give us this day our daily bread Strength. Expound, because I got some thoughts there also. What do you mean by strength, Jamie? Using my strength on every daily basis. Okay. Start me off with your strength. That's good. Yeah, can I expound on that? Yeah, go go for it. <clears throat> I'd say being culturally competent. Back in the day, bread was a lot of their meals, too. And whenever, um, you know, that being much of the main course, it's it's one of those things that probably they had to have. So just like you said, it, strength. What yeah. did they have to have to give them strength? Literally the main course of the meal. Yeah. Give, let us be the Let me mm. see you as the main course of the meal. Uh, of what I need for strength, so I like that. I like that a lot. The strength, that's good. I, I don't. I don't know about you guys. I'm one of those kind of people that that love to have bread with everything. And if I ever get to a Texas Roadhouse or a place that has really good bread, I may not even eat my meal. Just give me, just give me a to go box right now, because <laughs> I'm just gonna keep eating more bread and more. And more. Bread is so delicious to me. I, Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I what? Want my yeah. And so there, there is a, a uh, significant piece. I'm trying to get another uh, camera connected here, but so forgive me for moving around here. There is a, there is an element there with bread, and I'm gonna give you some scriptures here in a moment. This is Bible study, so get your Bibles out. I have multiple scriptures to to lead us down a path around why bread was used, not water, not give us this day our daily water, not give us this day our daily meat, not give us this day our daily portion, our daily seeds. He he said bread. Any any other thoughts here before we uh before I jump in? Let me see what we're saying on, on TikTok. Mary Lou says all that nourishes our spirit Ren, how are you doing tonight? Uh, Bud said it, it's possessions and thoughts. Sister J says, gives us the word mind of him for the day to get through it. All inclusive. Okay. So here's my two cents on bread and why bread was important. Uh, let me scroll back up here on my note. So, as I just mentioned, bread is one of those things that, you know, as Brother Vaughn said, they have it at every meal. It's a part of each meal. Bread has substance. It has vitamins and nutrients and fiber to physically help the body. So if we were to try to break down what bread does to the actual body, it helps us to understand what it means spiritually. So when I think about bread, it has carbohydrates sugars it breaks down inside the body to give the body the strength it needs the word or god jesus gets on the inside of us and begins to activate begins to move to the parts of the body that is jamie i mean uh gracie just alluded to in the areas that i need at that moment so there may be days that the bread i need goes to more of my immune system because my immune system's weak. And there's other days that that sugar and the carbohydrates and the energy uh, is is used to, to you know, uh, work in my brain and gives me more glucose to function uh, properly. 
even in how I chew bread, right? You chew bread differently than you drink water or other different types of food. Bread can get stuck if you're not careful in the, in the back of your jaws. And so you have to chew it properly. When I take on God's word, when I take on his spirit, when I take on everything Jesus has given me for this day, uh, my mama used to tell me, Ken, chew at least 30 times before you swallow. Take, take your time. Take your time with your food. She's probably watching right now saying, I still tell you that to this day. I can eat a meal in 10 minutes. My mama can eat a meal in 30. Same meal. Mm, this is good. I need to have this in my notes. Same meal, but she takes her time. And we'll sit there and have to wait on her because she takes time to, to chew the word, to congest, to, to, to uh, absorb it, to, to let it marinate. Here's a good scripture for tonight. Write this one down. It's found in, I believe, and got to get back to my notes, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11. Anybody know what that says before I find it here? Anybody remember uh, as I'm trying to find my spot here? Hebrews chapter 4. The word of God is... Ah, uh, where did it go? Bear with me. You may beat me to it. Stay with me. Hebrews chapter four. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling my notes. There it is. Hebrew, Hebrews 4 and 12, I said 11. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of the soul and spirit, both joints and marrow, and it's able to judge thoughts and intentions of the heart. So whenever we think about bread, our daily bread, and it being the word of God, or it being Jesus consuming what he has for us for the day and chewing it properly and making sure that we, we swallow it and it digests and it gets into our stomachs or gets into our soul, our spirit, and it goes through the small intestines and then it's absorbed into the rest of our body. Your daily bread has to be the word of God and walking with Jesus at all times because it is the nutrients you need. As you guys have stated, I'll take it a little bit further in my thought process. You know, that, those carbohydrates that turn to sugar gives us energy. You, you wonder why sometimes people don't have the energy spiritually to get through the day. They're mentally fatigued. They're, they're spiritually fatigued. They're emotionally fatigued. And I would just ask them this question. Did you eat today? Have you ever asked somebody that question? I know I, me and my wife ask each other that all the time. We're so busy. Life gets, you know, challenging. And we'll pause and say, did you? Did you stop to like physically eat today? And one of us to say, uh, I had some chips and some crackers. Or I just snacked on some walnuts, but that's not enough. You're going to be depleted. I would ask the person that's watching tonight as we're studying the word, the practical nature of it. How often are you eating the daily bread? What do they tell us in nutrition classes as kids or whatever? And there's some science that says it could be one or the other. I'm not trying to get into the science. How many times are you supposed to eat a day on average? What do they tell us? I don't know what the new three. science says. Yeah, when we were growing up, it was three. Now they're telling people that you can maybe eat two times a day and snack throughout. I don't know what the number is. But they do say that you can't go without I mean, there's some intermittent fasting that we'll get into next week because there's a whole other section on fasting that we'll talk about. But as far as your daily bread, you have to eat at least two or three times a day for energy. It, it gives you um, the strength you need, as Jamie said. The other thing that I think bread does for me, it's a comfort food. As I just mentioned, I can, I can literally make rolls or biscuits or banana nut bread or whatever and just eat bread. Out. It's comforting. Something about the word of God comforts me. It gives me just this feeling that everything is actually going to be all right because these are his words. They, they transform and renew me to a place where I can just be at peace. 
again, I'll just speak from for me, but I can eat bread and just sit on the couch and be like, this is comforting. He's our comforter. The Holy Spirit fills us with all joy, all comfort, all peace. And then the last thing that I'll add that I think bread can do for us, why he says, give us this day our daily bread. Uh, you know, there was leavened bread and there was unleavened bread. And I won't get into too much of that Bible study tonight. Uh, but he told the disciples in Matthew chapter 16, you can write that one down. And I'll give you a few more scriptures here in a moment. Matthew chapter 16, verses 5 through 12, he says, be very careful that you don't eat the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they actually thought he, that he was talking about physical bread. What was he actually teaching? What, what was he saying that be careful that you don't eat the bread of our, of the world today? The teaching, the understanding, or should we say the misunderstanding? So what, so let me ask, yeah, go ahead. Who, Say, false, false prophets. Yeah. So what are some some false misnomers, some misunderstandings? What are some doctrines today that we can easily maybe consume that will cause us to be misled? What are, what are some of the things out there today that could could masquerade as good bread, but it, it really isn't anybody? And I'm reading some TikTok. <clears throat> Any religion besides Jesus. Okay, so any religion, we'll put religion over here. As yeah, let's that. yeah let's do yeah. You could say religion really in itself. Religion can come across as what pious and. Um, what what you say? It can come across as pious and, and holy, couldn't it? The, the the and when I say religion, I, I want to make sure you and I are on the same page. And you and I had this conversation last week. Um. Mm -hmm. The work of church, yes. Look, looking yes. busy, looking busy. The big C, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I that, agree. That can be a distraction. Because I think what God wants is holiness. Okay, thoughts, opinions, comments. Mary Lou said a religious spirit. Ron said appearance. What, what are some other leaven? bread that's out there that we want to be very careful we don't we don't take that as our daily bread what what about uh, yeah, go ahead. lustful desire lustful gluttony, de yeah. lustful gluttony. Mm. gluttony of what what are some things that we can be gluttonous of that can distract us our health say that again our health Health, okay, okay. What else? Health, religion. I think trying to look good, okay. trying, just trying to be perfect or look good. You know what I mean? Like in every aspect, physically, maybe just to everybody else too. Oh, I want to be perfect. I want to have this good job. I want to have this good uh, marriage. I want to have good, good, good. Um, when it all starts with I. That's good. So that's in my notes. One of, one of the things that's a false misnomer or misunderstanding that could be the, the wrong bread we eat is materialism and consumerism, individualism, right? Being self-centered, promoting self, promoting me, pleasure, gratification. It can come across as spiritual because, you know, I got to make room for me and God, or I got to make sure that the Lord is blessing me. But at the end of the day, we're supposed to be blessing others. And so anytime that we put self or things before God, um, it's the wrong bread. What about, what about social media? How much false information, false ideologies do you think come across daily? Is everybody who's preaching on social media, on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram reels, uh, are you- a lot of false prophets. How easy is it, Gracie, for somebody to hear something that's this? What, what do they say? Ticklish to the ears, or appeasing, appeasing to the ears, without doing any. 
Very easy. I mean, every day. <laughs> All you got to do is get on there. There it is. Roll and you're going to see something. <laughs> And that's, that's when your discernment comes in and you have to know to keep scrolling. That's good. Yeah. Part part of part of oh, this is good. Part of what my kids do. I don't know about y'all's kids. I don't know how they grew up like this. Uh because I didn't grow up like this. But my kids will go to the pantry and they'll check dates on the bread before they actually eat the bread. Even even if the date says April 2nd, they won't touch it. They won't touch it at all. Where I grew up, I don't ever remember looking at dates. Did y'all look at dates on on bread and food when y'all grew up? My indication that bread was bad was if it was a little mold on it. <laughs> we used to eat stale bread that would crumble. Like it was, I mean, it was what you had. You didn't you didn't run to the store just because your bread was stale. It's some stale we, bread. Uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, in our household, we take the molded ones out. You, unless it's a little, you weren't with kids going up. <laughs> I, I do. I've been in some houses where you you take that front loaf, that back loaf, you throw it in the trash, and you kind of look at the rest of it. Listen, there's some moldy, stale bread on the internet that we have to be very, very careful of. And it can come across pious. It can come across holy. I would challenge us to, like we've been practicing and studying uh, on Sunday nights, learning discernment, back it up with the word of God. It, it, it should absolutely have something found in the word of God. And I'll just say this quickly, and, and, and I won't go into a lot of detail here. Be very careful of pastors and preachers who put their name on other saints it's one thing to call out something that's wrong which we absolutely are called to do we are called to rebuke things that are wrong things that are evil but it's a it's a whole nother discernment needed to understand that that's god's child even if the person is wrong there should it should not come across negative it shouldn't come across demeaning it shouldn't come across deflammatory it shouldn't come across uh uh what is it when I can sue you because um, you said something really, really false about me? Right. It it should not have those type of tendencies. Yeah. There you go. There is. Yeah. And so I would warn all of us, as Gracie said, when we're scrolling, and and your sp your spirit should be saying, "Wait a minute, wait a minute." It's one thing to call out sin; it's another thing to go in on the individual. Right. I still should love you. And, and not your sin. And so uh, be careful of that leaven that's out there. And there's some very popular preachers. I'm not going to say anyone's names. I'm going to let your spirit do the work. But be very careful of these popular preachers and prophets. Their whole ministry is other preachers, other prophets, other people in the church. That's their whole ministry. They get online and the leaven that they preach, the bread that they share, it's downing someone else. I'll leave that alone. I'll let the spirit move. Another leaven that is easily taken in by Christians. Be careful. Brace yourself here. Is political extremism and uh, the, the polarization of red or blue. It's, it's easy for Christians to get pulled into the leaven the bread that there's nowhere in the Bible. There's nowhere in the Bible that says pick a color, pick a side. Nowhere in the in the scripture does it say we we have to align to Democrat, Republican. I'm not I'm not telling you how to to view your your politics as much as I'm saying be very careful of the leaven that the Pharisees and the Sadducees feed you. Line it up with the word of God. I can tell you this. And this is, I, I, I'm going to do like Paul. Paul says, uh, someone, I'm hearing an echo, so I don't know who that might need to come down. But Sister I'm Pippen, sorry, it's Sonia trying to call me. And oh, I'm that's all right. To figure out how to answer. That's all right. You're good. <laughs> tell, tell Sonia I said hello. So here's what my Bible tells me. And this is my opinion. I'll do like Paul. This is not in the scripture, but it sounds biblical. Love people, love all people, help everybody, 
Jesus never but turned anybody away. away. He he didn't say, well, we we Jeez. we want some concessions if we're going to help this group of people. We're going to have to bargain. Like anytime you go to bargaining, either side, either side. I'm and just for the record, I'm not, I'm neither one. I'm I'm not red or blue. I just believe that if Christ was here right now, he would tell us to be very careful, be very careful of the politics and the leaven that's being fed to us daily and have a discerning spirit around, watch this, how to love people. Did Christ ever discriminate against anybody? Remember the story of the 5,000 and then the 4,000? Did he say, no, no, we can't, we can't feed that group because their politics isn't right. Where are we going to get enough bread to feed all of these people? He said, sit them down in groups of 50. Sit everybody down. Everybody eats. Everybody gets to partake of the word of God. So just be careful. If you got a comment or opinion or suggestion, I'll let you, I'll let you comment here. That's my two cents. Has anybody got two cents they want to throw into that conversation? I love how you said that, Pastor King, because they, you know, when you, when I, um, you know, when, when I went through my trials in life, I, I love the fact that as I went through these trials, um, I know God had another purpose for me besides, you know, he sent me, He's, I was very blessed when I went back to treatment the last time because I asked God to use me and I didn't I didn't necessarily you know say hey I just want to go make a mistake but when I went to treatment and I got help all of a sudden all these women that didn't know God at all like I felt blessed because God said to share what I've given you mm -hmm. and so I was these girls were like I don't know God I don't know I don't know nothing I don't know how to read the Bible and so I sat down in the Bible study with all these women. I showed them how to read it, understand it. it but I made it to a point to understand whatever the Lord is giving you direction in, that's what he's trying to speak into you. That's good. And so it, it was like a big blessing in disguise, like going back. You know, I was giving the bread that he gave me to give. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was a blessing. because I didn't understand why I understood it at a young age. But as I got older, it started to make more sense, and it was a blessing more than more than anything because I I felt the peace of the Lord just over my life like instantly. We're gonna we're gonna use the last ten minutes. You you've shared bits and pieces, and I'd like to use the last ten minutes of tonight's Bible study for you to share, uh, if you choose, in a little bit more detail your journey, your testimony, because there are many people who are, are probably struggling with their own challenges that would love to hear um, your story. And so you make a good point. At the end of the day, we're all God's people. We're all hurting. And we should not let the leaven of the, the politics, the leaven of consumerism, even the, the leaven of non-traditional values. I believe that there is a, a, an effort by Satan to devalue family, devalue a father in the home, devalue marriage, right? There's this, this push, this move. Uh, and again, I want to be very careful because I, I know TikTok will, they're listening for certain keywords. I'm not ashamed. I'm not afraid, but I want to stay on here because we're touching lives. But there's a, a leaven out there that's not God's daily bread to devalue what God intended. Does that make sense? He, he intended man and woman in marriage, period. And so when you hear things, and I got to be careful here, of inclusion, diversity, it, it sounds good, doesn't it? Doesn't that sound good? Make sure you have a diversity committee. Make sure you have an inclusion committee. If we're not careful, Christians, if we're not careful, you can be brought in and you'll sit there. And I think Jesus was speaking to us about the leaven 
All right, I'll 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 be I'll I'll stop there. Comments, thoughts, opinions, questions, questions, comments. Yeah, I think this whole country is like set up as a division. Everything's black or white, yes. Republican, Democrat. Yeah. I mean, everything's about division. And then so, and that's his goal, isn't it, Gracie, to divide? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Give that's us point. Give us this day our daily bread. Um, Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Write this down. We're going to go to the next section of this prayer. Uh, but write this one down in your Bible study. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. He told Satan while he was going through his own trial, his own temptation, when he was given the world. What did he, what did he tell Satan? Man shall not live by physical bread alone, but by what? By every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Give us this day your word. Give us today what we need to sustain us. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. I, I see that comment, Mary Lou. We need to be aware of social conformity. Absolutely. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. This was when Paul was explaining about him being weak and him struggling, very similar to what he said in Philippians about the thorn in the flesh. But he said to Christ, or maybe this is the thorn in the flesh, my apologies, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace, my mercy on your life daily is enough. It's all you really need. And when you're weak, my word makes you strong. The substance substance of my daily bread makes you strong. I, I think Paul understood more than anybody else how important it was to have daily bread. That word daily, as we look at this and we're going to move on, it's found nowhere else in the New Testament. S small little fact for you. You can go do your own research, look up the word daily bread, Nowhere else is it found other than the synoptic gospel of Luke, uh, so where, where it's the same prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. That word daily could also be transferred, uh, translated as day by day or day over day. So in this prayer, Jesus is saying to us that when you pray, Lord, give me what I need today and tomorrow. Lord, look after us over these next 24 hours. Remember, in the Jewish calendar, a day was when the sun set. That's when the day began to when the sun dawned or set the very next day. So technically speaking, right now as the sun is setting in all of our different cities, we just began Wednesday. It's Wednesday. And so as I'm praying tonight, as I go to sleep, I'm literally praying within a two-day span. Give me Ooh, this is good. Lord, finish giving me what I need as I close out this day and as I fall asleep into the next day. Protection and love and hope and grace. Comments, thoughts, opinions. Give us this day our daily bread. I'll give you a couple of more. Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 35. Look at that scripture. Turn to it. John chapter 6, verse 35. I want somebody to read that for me. I won't read it to you. We're going to connect all this together. Give us this day our daily bread. First person that can get to it, read it out loud. John chapter 6, verse 35. Sister Pittman, you still with me? Yes. All right. All right. John 6 and 35. If somebody finds it on TikTok, I think I'll I got it. it. Read it. What does it say? John 6, 35 says, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Mm -hmm. He who comes to me shall never hunger. What? And he who believes in me shall never thirst. Wait. Mm -hmm. Wait. Say that again. Mm -hmm. Give us this day our daily what? Read your section again. And Jesus said to them, I am 
the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never, never, never wait, ne hunger. never, not sometimes hunger. Me sometimes have an appetite, start having cravings. Never hunger. Never. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. Wait. Mm. Jump down to verse 51. Verse 51. Let's see here. Verse 51. I, I am the living bread hmm. which came down from heaven. What? If anyone eats this bread eats of this bread, uh -huh. he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, Ooh. which I shall give for the life of the world. Let's connect this. Let's connect this. So what did we do this past Sunday? What did we celebrate? What did, what did Jesus do at the Last Supper? He said, this is my bread, which is now my body. My body. And and if you consume me, come on, let's eat this together. Do this in remembrance of what I've done for you. If you take me in, if you surrender all to me and consume me, I'd li I'm living bread. See, we just talked about the physical bread that molds after three or four months. He is the living bread that never molds, that never gets crusty. He is consuming fire that can set apart soul and spirit. And see the intents of my heart and can set me on the right path. Oh, how important it is that we get the daily bread. And I'll say this again, if you hadn't picked this up, it isn't just physical. When we pray this prayer, yes, Lord, give me today a job and a home. And I want to make sure my bills are paid. Now, give me today my daily nourishment. This is spiritual. Lord, I need you today spiritually. I need to feed on you. I need all of you. Brother Ken, are you uh, are you are you also going to mention uh, the well? You mentioned it. Go. Okay, I'm just going to paraphrase it. So also, Jesus <clears throat> in the New Testament, there's a Samaritan woman. She is um, most likely known by many as a prostitute. Yeah, a prostitute or Six. whore. Um, but they said that there was, uh, he, I think Jesus mentions that, that you have five husbands because she tries to kind of trick. Uh oh, did I freeze or did her you freeze? Her butt, just uh -huh. call her out because okay. he's not a hater and he's, he's not going to just leave you without anything. Yeah. He calls her out and it tells her very similar to this because he's consistent. He's never changing. Um, he says, Hey, I can provide you with living water. Hmm. And, um, you know, he, he says that he is living water and anyone who drinks from, from the living water of the well of him shall never thirst again. This is good. This is good. So bread and water go together. Drink, drink and bread, wine and bread go together, water and bread. I, I don't know again about you guys. But anytime I have some delicious bread, I got to wash it down with something because it'll get stuck right here, you know. And so he he does use the illustration. It's not so much in the prayer as much as we can also send his other teachings that he's both substance, substance and substance and for nourishment and also refreshing to wash it down the spirit. So his word is in me and then his spirit refreshes me. That's good. You got to have both. One, so, one so, more thing yeah, I wanted go ahead. to share with you guys that God put on my heart to share with y'all um, that um, what, what he's teaching us tonight, what he's giving you the words to teach tonight, that the Lord also um, brings to my heart, Jeremiah one twelve. Yes. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will ha hasten my word to perform it. Mm. Which which goes to another scripture I have, Michelle. <coughs> Isaiah 55, 11. 
goes perfectly with what you just said. Isaiah 55, 11, write that one down. This is Bible study tonight. You can ask questions. You can comment in the chat. This is the opportunity everybody gets to jump in. But this is what Isaiah 55, 11 says. So will my word, which goes forth out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty. It will accomplish what I desire. That's what the Lord said. His words are so powerful. And that's why I've also said so many times, you've got to pray the word of God. It can't be empty prayers. You speak the word of God over your home, in your house, because it doesn't settle like dust. It's active. It's moving. It's living. Whoever is in your home, they're going to be impacted by the word of God because it's living. It's powerful. It's substance of what we need. It's, it's the living word. 2 Timothy 3, write this one down. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is inspired by God, beneficial for teaching, for rebuke, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man or woman of God may be fully capable, equipped in every good work. So daily bread also gives us the opportunity, as you guys have mentioned, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. To be salt and light that he described in Matthew chapter 5, verse 18, or maybe it was verse 12. That's our job. You can't be salt and light to somebody. You can't be bread to someone else if you, if you don't have enough bread in you. Give us this day our daily bread. Amen. Any other comments or thoughts on daily bread before we go to this next section? And then I'm going to allow Sister Michelle to give us her testimony. All right. And lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. Give us 15 minutes. I'll let you go. 15 minutes. Then we'll have Sister Michelle share. Lead us. And we may come back. We don't have to. We don't have to put a book in on lead us not into temptation. We, we can we can put a bookmark in it and come back next week. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, I've heard many people when they pray this part, they put a, a period at the end of temptation, not understanding that this is one phrase, that these things go together. Temptation and evil are two things that he prayed in tandem. He did not say, lead us not into temptation, period. Deliver us from evil, period. No, Lead us not into temptation. And then there is a, uh, is it a preposition? Is that the right gr grammatical uh, usage here? My version says, but. I was always told that everything that comes before the but is negated. Oops. Jesus uses this term, and I love to hear what versions you guys use. But deliver us from evil and deliver us from evil. What's your version say? But or and? Verse 13. Mine says but. Okay. Mine says but. Okay. Same here. All right. So so what is what is what did what was the point of Christ using that transition? Does anybody have a, uh, an inkling kind of as you think into this? What's the spirit telling us around that transition of lead, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil? Why are those two um, things synonymous with one another, temptation and evil? So um, what I come to know is that God uses the word but because we're all sinners but he can deliver us from our sin no sin is greater than another that's good so our temptation can absolutely be overcome if we can overcome the evil one any other thoughts I'll give you some commentary here some scripture any other thoughts on temptation and evil being in the same sentence? Let me read what we're saying on TikTok. It's going to happen. It's going to happen every day. 
Sister V, I see you out there. Every day, Jamie, you say? Say that again. <clears throat> that you're going to go through it every day. You're going to go through temptation every day. You just, every day, ask for forgiveness. Yeah. Every day we're tempted. We're tempted daily. So so the Greek word for temptation that's found all throughout the New, New Testament is this meaning of putting to of proof or uh, trial, suffering, being tested. And so Jesus understood what temptation was because he literally, literally probably weeks or days before he gives us this sermon, he just came off the mountain. 40 days being tempted. So if anyone understands what temptation is, he knew what it meant in this prayer because he just experienced the temptation as a human. He was the son of man. So he still had fleshly human tendencies. He just didn't give in to him. He was the son of man. He was God's son. And so when he says, lead us not into temptation, lead us not into trial, Lead us not into suffering. He suffered for 40 days. He was in trial for 40 days. And he says, when you pray, oh, pray that you don't be led into temptation. He understood what that meant also as he was three years later sitting on his knees, sweating great drops of blood, tempted to, to not follow through on the Lord's command, on on this plan, this master plan that they had from the very beginning. He said, if, if this, if this, if this possible, if it's just possible, let this cup, what? Let it pass. He was tempted. He was tempted to, to not follow through. He's tempted to not do what the Lord asked him to do. He was tempted even in the garden to not deal with the suffering, the trials, the pain. That's what a temptation is. It's a trial. The Greek word is suffering. He did not want to suffer on the cross, but then he said what? But not my will. Not my will. I'll yield to Tim. I'll, I'll, nope. Not what I want, but what you want. Trials and persecutions, spiritual conflicts, agony, and I'm going to probably have to check my my tick, I figured out why TikTok closes on me. It's right at an hour. I have to swipe something to let them know I'm still active. And so I'm going to, I think we started right at uh, 701. Yes, go ahead. When I was younger and I used to read that when it said, lead us not into temptation. I always said, why would I think God would, he would lead us Ooh. to temptation? Why would I sit back and say, you know, that yeah. was my thought about it. Yeah. And then I had to realize it's like, lead us not, or lead us away from temptation. Is that what the not meant? Are, are you are you reading my notes, Sister Pittman? <laughs> Sister Pittman, are you in my notes again? You always seem no. to somehow get into my notes. That it's is, just, it was just not what it's there. So that, that is a very, and we're going to pick this up next week. We won't be able to get through all of this tonight. I got too many questions here for you guys and, and uh, uh, scriptures. And so put a bookmark here. I want you to study this next for next week. But she just asked a very important question. Because I thought in the scripture it said that Christ doesn't tempt us and that temptation comes from our own evil desires. That's found in, I believe, uh, James chapter 1, verse 12. When he is tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil. So here's the complexity of your question, Sister Pittman, that I also have. Just, just keep both of them away from me. Why would you even allow me to go through a trial? Because here's what the trial will either end up doing for you. Three things a trial will have you do. The temptation, the suffering. It will either make you strong. And, and fight even more to resist, you'll end up giving in to where you say, you know what, it's too much. The suffering is too much. The trial is too much. The temptation is too much. My flesh is weak. I'll give in. The third thing that temptation will either have you do uh, is be dormant. 
You're neither here nor there. You're neither hot nor cold. You don't even care. It's apathy. I'm not fighting. I'm not flighting. I'm not running away from it. I'm not running to it. I'll just stay here and die. And we get depressed. We get discouraged. We get overwhelmed. We get overstimulated. We get to a point where it's just like, just take me. I don't, I'm not running. I'm, I'm just too tired. It's in the trial that Jesus says, when you pray, uh oh, let me, let me check. I'm checking. I don't want it to, to cut off TikTok. When you pray, we're asking him that trial, that suffering, not lead me away from it, but give me the strength to endure it. Now, now it's very possible. It's very possible that in our prayer, he does allow us to evade trial. But we've all lived long enough to know that trial will come. Suffering will come. Temptations will come. And it's the prayer of saying, Lord, when the, temp when the temptation comes, give me the strength to endure. Look, when I see temptation at a distance, when I see trials, and give me the strength to endure. Look, when I see temptation at a distance, when I see trials, 